Next question is from Oxymoron, and this is kind of um, directed towards me. How bipartisan and independent is USRIF with haphazard choices like the pushing for the recognition of the Armenian genocide or the Rohingya genocide, but choose to remain silent over the Bangladesh genocide? Or political, or sorry, or ignorance towards Ukraine for its activity through the Azovs, but Russia is kept under watch list for possible violation of religious freedom past invasion. Possible violation of religious freedom. I'm not sure what you mean by that last part. So for those who don't know, um, Oxymoron is referring to the um, United States Committee on International Religious Freedom. It is a bipartisan or nonpartisan, um, no, I think technically bipartisan, um, committee that is a part of the State Department that makes recommendations to policymakers and legislators and the State Department itself about issues concerning religious freedom. So a lot of it is work that monitors other countries and they have an annual report. Um, and um, they talk about, and they, and they also have classifications and designations for the severity of the violations going on in different countries. So um, in terms of how bipartisan and independent it is, it, my understanding is that there are different commissioners in that lead USRIF and they kind of have different kind of genres or fields within the um, committee itself. And that there are only specific other designations within the government who can make the appointees for these designations. So like the Speaker of the House can nominate two people for two of these commissioners. A different government body can designate two people for um, the commissioner, the, the president can um, pick one person or a few people to go in. So that's supposed to make it more um, uh, less less politically dogmatic, like because theoretically there would be people from different parties in these different areas, and then you know making the recommendations or nominations for commissioners. Um, uh, what you were saying about like choosing the Rohingya genocide over the Bangladesh genocide, you know, that's a difficult topic because I think part of what it is is the work, and I could be completely wrong. Rohingya, I think part of it what is it is Armenian, I think. Armen oh. oh, and Rohingya, the Rohingya. Okay, okay, I think part of what it is is that activists have pushed to raise awareness about government within government officials and within government bodies to make these specific genocides or crimes against humanity like a political priority. Um, the Armenian genocide being a huge one. Like the Armenian American community pushes really Isn't hard it politically for recognition of this. So I don't know if there is enough political willpower to even get the Bangladesh genocide recognized. There should be. There should be. But I think that, no, no, I think, does anybody deny the Bangladesh genocide? No, but it's different for a government to take the official position that they are recognizing this genocide. I think like, maybe maybe the reason why they're focused... Recognizing the Armenian genocide is different than just like general awareness of it. And the Bangladesh genocide is con called the forgotten genocide for a reason. Okay, but no, the reason why... They don't. They're not pushing on that one. Is because it's officially recognized as a genocide, and I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong about this. By who? Me if I'm wrong. Everybody, everybody refers. It's officially recognized as a genocide. Maybe the reason why they are doing that is because they're focusing on the Armenian genocide. Is because it's challenged as a genocide. Mm. You know, like I don't. Is there? I think the Bangladesh genocide is worldwide recognized as a genocide and they don't seem to be needing to push upon that because it is a you know, because it's not being challenged i mean the genocides they are focusing on is the ones that are being challenged maybe that's the reason 
do have you ever seen like look everything i check in the yeah have you ever seen anybody denying denying the bangladesh genocide as a genocide no armin i'm not talking about denial of this i'm talking about the government position you do, do you i know but what why would they focus on making sure a genocide that is officially recognized everywhere as genocide. I've maybe the focus that they're spending the time and resources in getting recognized the genocide that people are trying to challenge. That's what I'm saying. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe I'm wrong. It's not simply about yeah. public awareness. This is like a, it, this is a state decision, and I just looked it up. The United States doesn't rec officially recognize the Bangladesh genocide. Well, because maybe they don't need to because everybody knows it's a genocide. Anyways, that's what I think. Maybe, maybe. No, maybe. I don't think that's how this works at all. I don't okay, think okay. I don't think the recognition of the Armenian genocide is simply because people oh, like okay, overall... never mind. Everything I said is wrong. If the, if what the oxymoron is saying is true, oxymoron is saying Pakistan denies the genocide. Of course okay. they do, because they perpetrated it. Okay, okay. So if there is active denial, then you're right, you know. There, there needs to be a push. Okay, so I'll take everything I said back. Like, know. think about how the Uyghur genocide is treated. Like, it's not simply to raise awareness. Like, there is a concerted state interest in recognizing the Uyghur genocide because okay, of okay. a contentious relationship wondering. with China. Like, it's not simply altruistic as much as I would like it to be. Let's be honest. Okay, I was, okay. So, I was just thinking out loud. And okay. I was wrong. Well, sorry to get so heated on this over you. And let okay, let's be honest. In terms of the Bangladesh genocide, probably the main reason why the United States doesn't recognize it is because of how we treated Pakistan during that genocide, gave them favorability, how we continue to unreasonably side with Pakistan, and we've had historically sided with Pakistan. Okay, so if like if this is if maybe this because of our own complicity mm. in the Bangladesh genocide. Okay, okay. So if that's if what you're saying is true, then the first part of the question is justified. However, I don't think the second part of the question is justified at all. The as of situation, you're describing it as Ukraine. As of is not Ukraine, it's part of Ukraine. Every country has its problematic peop you know, people, including Ukraine. So I don't think it's like saying I mean yeah, well, I now that think... the Azov Battalion has been integrated into the Ukrainian military, they are now part of the state, capital S. Mm -hmm. It's desperation, maybe. Like, for example, if you, I mean, if I, true. if somebody is shooting at my house and I just happen to have a Yahtzee, again, I'm saying Yahtzee because you to be sensitive with what the word I need to be using, you know. Anyways, you know what I'm saying, okay? I just yeah, want to yeah, go yeah. on a trigger, trigger the algorithm. If people are shooting at my house and there happens to be a Yahtzee happens to be in my house, and he wants to also pick up a gun and defend the house because he's in the house, I'm not gonna be like, I'm not gonna be like, no, you're. That's a not gonna be the exact moment. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna be like that Yahtzee. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be like. You're defending yeah. me for now, but when we're done here, we're gonna have some problems. Yeah, when I'm, I think this is a problem that needs to be addressed after when you're defending your territory. I don't think I could, I could blame Ukrainian government right now. I need all the help I can get right now, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, think, it's yeah. nothing. It's understandable. Really. Yeah. And oxymoron is saying, I just want to say that these bodies are not academic. That's true. The body is not academic. They do use academics for the constructions of many of their different reports. I've spoken to um, one of the authors of like the user of blasphemy report, and they do use um, standards that um, would, you know, meet peer review standards um, in academia. Um, so, but yes, it's not technically academic and technically it doesn't go through a formal peer review atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues including judicial harassment and censorship whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight Link in the description below.